very special surprise guest. And I told you all about that. I told you we're going to have a special surprise today. And we do. Dawn North James, who is the daughter of Corky and Carla, is our special guest today. And her whole family is here with her. And if you have not heard the story of her family, you are in for a treat today. And if you have already heard it, you're in for a treat today. God has done wonderful, miraculous things in the lives of their family. And uh, it's a pleasure, it's a joy, it's an honor to have Dawn with us today. So I'd just like to go ahead and turn it over to you, Dawn, and let's welcome Dawn today. That's your mom. All right. That's right, Elijah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Go ahead, Donnie. We just think of him as Eli. Amazingly joyful, like unexplainably joyful. And then I have moments where I'm like, oh yeah, he's a miracle. He was diagnosed with um, spina bifida when I was 16 weeks pregnant. The doctors had never seen a case as severe as his. His spine was completely open from C4 all the way down. So they gave him a 0% chance of survival. They said it was 100% fatal. Then when he was born and was breathing and swallowing on his own, all things that they said he wouldn't do, um, you know, we knew that. Just the fact that we had already come that far and overcome all the odds. So I wasn't afraid of the fact that he didn't have brain matter where he needed to have it. You know, my feeling was God gave him the 10% of his brain that he needed since we only use 10% anyway. We've just kind of adopted the motto, don't borrow tomorrow's worries for today. Just worry about today, today, and tomorrow will be there when we get there. Everybody has their own challenges. Some people's challenges are more visible. It doesn't make them want any less than what everyone else wants. He loves playing peekaboo from under blankets. Mickey Mouse goes with us everywhere we go. He loves to be outside loves watching other kids run and play and the chaos of it all. He loves to be around lots of people. He loves his sister immensely. And he's very silly and he'll play with Skylar. He'll reach his arms out and say he wants a hug. And then as soon as she gets up to him to give him a hug, he'll punch her in the face and laugh hysterically. To see him cruising around in his wheelchair and, you know, getting to run into walls and chase people down and all that, you know, fun little boy stuff that he can do now. And as a mom, just refills your cup. Spina bifida is called a snowflake case because no two cases are alike. And to me, really, it's not just spina bifida. Everybody, every life, every situation is a snowflake diagnosis. 
I would absolutely not trade lives with anyone. I'm rather happy with my normal. <laughs> right, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah. Cookie. You're good with your cookie? You're happy with your cookie? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, as you can see, <laughs> Eli loves to be up here, um, and I'm going to ask for everyone's grace because I do not. <laughs> it's part of God's sense of humor is I have a pathological fear of public speaking, and then he gave me Eli. Um, but I know that I have to have that fear. He had to give that to me so that when we do speak, God gets the glory and not me um but i would be okay if the fear eased up a little um so this is eli the video that you watched is um about three and a half years old now so it was when he was almost three now he's six um and as you saw it touched on a little bit of what Eli has going on and the miracles that we as a family have witnessed um, and live every day. So God is very tangible to us. Um, there is no denying it. Um, and we get to see God's sense of humor daily in Elijah. As you have all heard, he is very vocal but technically, he is nonverbal. He doesn't have the area of the brain that deals with communication. So he shouldn't be able to speak to us or carry on a conversation. Our challenge is getting him not to. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, and he plays ball at soccer. He plays power wheelchair soccer. Um, which in his case, it is considered 100% fatal. We're working on changing that because clearly he's here. Um, but we were told with 100% certainty that he would not survive. He wouldn't make it through delivery if he even made it to the delivery. Um, we just recently had to have surgery for a sports-related injury. So, <laughs> never say never. Um, he decided to flip a table over with his abdomen in power wheelchair soccer. And so, yeah, we laughed about that. Never thought we would be having surgery for that. Granted, we've had, he's had 39 major surgeries to date, but now he can say he has soccer wounds, scars from sports. Um, but he is definitely full of life. And we were told if by some miracle he was able to breathe, that with absolute certainty he would be a vegetable quadriplegic with no quality of life. Um, I was told I would be a bad mother if I didn't terminate because my family that I already have would turn bad 
because all of my attention would be focused on a child with no quality of life. Um, my daughter is still a straight A student and is one of the kindest, most compassionate children you'll ever meet. And it is because of <laughs> and she had her tonsils out, Eli wants you to know. <laughs> um, so pretty much everything that we've been told by the medical community from the beginning, God has proven them wrong on every level, which has been so amazing to watch and have the front row seat. Um, and just getting to know Eli, if you spend five minutes with this child, you don't have pity for me because of his medical needs. You'll have pity for me because of the attitude and personality that comes in this very tiny body. Um, and <laughs> He does get bad at school. We've had parent-teacher conferences, and yes, he's the one that I know the principal really well because of, not the other one. <laughs> um, he's definitely full of personality, the life of the party. He can't talk. He thinks the dog wants to talk in the microphone. <laughs> but al along the lines of our journey, one of the most commonly asked questions I get, because we had 10 different specialists tell me to terminate during my pregnancy that there was no hope. I think the most commonly asked thing when people hear that is, well, did you fire them? You know, immediately we want to lash out and blame the people when I felt that God had led me to these specialists so that we could be a witness to them. So all of those specialists are still involved in Eli's life, and we have watched some of them come to Jesus. Um, we have seen some of them change the language and verbiage that they use. Uh, one of the specialists in particular will not use 100% on any diagnosis now because of Eli. And they will refer families to us that have difficult diagnoses. And, you know, they will let them know, well, it doesn't look good. But we do have a family that had 100% fatal, and the child is six, goes to school, rides horses, does barrel racing, power wheelchair soccer. I don't know if you heard that, but he admitted that he hits his friends at school. <laughs> Do you see what I'm talking about? Where I need the pity? It is not for the chair. <laughs> um, and that specialist that told me that I would ruin my family by giving birth to Elijah, my question was, how could I be a good mom if I did? Do I go home and tell my daughter I killed your brother because I didn't think he would be worth it? That he might be a challenge? What kind of message does that send? That tells her, if anything happens to you and you become work for me, mm, you're done. I'm out. I'm only in it for the good times. And he likes to sing Cowboys Don't Die at the Barn. That's one of his favorite things is music and microphones.
but um, Eli is used quite frequently um, in case studies, in medical journals. He's been the cover of Vanderbilt Medicine Magazine. Um, his face has a tendency to sell papers, so the papers use him a lot. He's wanting his sister to come up here and talk is what he's telling me. I need to let her talk. <laughs> Would you like to talk? This is the beautiful Miss Schuyler. <laughs> she actually goes with me to Vanderbilt to teach the doctors and the med students and the um, nursing students and she's my number one assistant I literally could not do our life without her and all the help she gives so I'm still waiting to see where I ruined her but maybe that's yet to come she is only 13 Eli has been such a huge blessing to our family and <laughs> He may drive us a little crazy sometimes, but he's brought us and everyone around him so much joy and happiness. And he's always there to make me laugh. And even though our life is pretty challenging, he's my brother and I wouldn't trade it for anything. going to give her a high five. Well, do you want to talk to her today? <laughs> <laughs> Will likes public speaking even less than I do, so. Somehow both of our kids love it. But I guess just to sum it all up, is this something I would have ever asked for? Never. If you had asked me, <laughs> if you had asked me seven and a half years ago, could I handle having a child with 40 plus diagnoses, the only known survivor in medical history, spending countless hours in research, countless days in the hospital, turning him over to the surgeons more times than I care to think about. Yes, and we do go to a lot of appointments. Um, I would have told you there is absolutely no way I can handle it. And I'll still tell you there's absolutely no way I can handle it. God can handle it. He can carry you. <laughs> but I wouldn't give up one second of the life that God has given me and the children that I have. I've learned so much through the journey with the kids. I've seen him bring more people to Jesus in six years than I have in 43. His story has saved many children from being terminated. I've been blessed to be chosen by God to help mentor families through difficult diagnoses. There are people 
literally all over the world that I communicate with on a regular basis that are going through challenges, difficult pregnancies, diagnoses after pregnancy, many of them that weren't sure if they were going to go through with it and then after learning Eli's story decided not to terminate. Some of the children didn't survive, some of them have. But every single person that I've mentored through that decided to continue with their pregnancy has been thankful that they did. Not one person regretted their decision, even the ones that the child only lived a few minutes, a few hours. They have, every single one of them, thanked me for convincing them that it's worth even those few minutes or hours, that they don't know what they would do had they given up, how they would feel, because they would have not had any time with the child or known what the outcome could have possibly been. Of course, the ones that the children have survived have been over the moon as we are to get their miracle. But it's one of those, you know, I've asked myself, why me many times, but not in the sense you may be thinking, not a why me, why did I have to do this, more of a why me, why would God pick a sinner like myself to bless with a child, with a miracle? Why did he have the faith in me to help carry this through? It's, there's not a moment that I've ever regretted my decision of carrying through. Yes, I remember. Um, so, <laughs> he wants you all to know that Tobias, his dog, ate his pole socks probe. Yes, we have all your typical family challenges. Dogs that don't obey, children that don't obey, moms that lose their temper, there are no pedestals in our home. That's one of the things I hear a lot is, oh, God gives special children to special parents. That's not it at all, I promise. We are just your typical average everyday family. We get mad at each other. We lose our patience with the kids. Our house is a mess. There are no pedestals in there, I promise. We do not dwell amongst them. <laughs> we have many challenges. <laughs> um, I, I guess that's about it. I don't know what else. Our journey is, our journey is definitely interesting. There's never a dull moment. He keeps us all on our toes and laughing and finding joy in the journey. Um, he loves to go to the hospital, loves to go see his doctors, loves to go in for surgery, which is a huge blessing because we spend a lot of time doing that. Well, thank you all. you, Dawn. Your mommy did a good job. You did a good job, too. Can I give you a high five? All right. I'll give your mommy one, too. And Skylar one, too. And Will one, too. <laughs> what a blessing to think that all of the doctors 
basically just said, don't go through with it. And now all of these doctors have been proved wrong. Amen. I'm so thankful for this family. And I'd like for us to bless them. Can we just stretch our hands o over this way and have a special prayer for this family? Father, we thank you for Will and Dawn and Skylar and Elijah, this whole family, oh God. And we pray your blessing upon them. Father, so many of us have prayed for them through the years, and we thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers. And Father, we're going to pray right now for the years that are to come that you would still be strong for them and that you would still be faithful. We know that you will. And that you would undergird them and strengthen them and be with them. Watch over them, protect them, keep them safe. And Father, most of all, that you would give them your peace. In the midst of the storms of this life, give them your peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. Well, this has been a beautiful beautiful Mother's Day, and I'm so thankful that we have been here with you. I'd like to ask one thing, though, before we leave. Could all of the moms please stand? You deserve a standing ovation, too. That's right. Let's be dismissed in prayer. Father, we thank you for your presence here today. We thank you for the reality of your love, your unconditional love that chases us down. Father, we thank you for your careful watch care over each and every one of us. Father, we pray that if there's anyone here today that does not know you and has not experienced the salvation that comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, that today would be the day that they surrender to the Lord Jesus. Father, we also ask if there's anyone here today that is discouraged, that you would lift them up and encourage them in their inner man. And Father, we're asking in Jesus' name that you would be with all of us and help us today and every day to give you all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Shalom.